Matt, thank you so much for that presentation. Thank you for the work you and your colleagues are doing. And thank you so much for being here today. We really, really appreciate it. Now I'm going to turn the microphone over to Paul Marcus, who's the co-founder of the Autism Consortium and the treasurer of our board. Please welcome Paul Marcus. Thank you, Didi. And you're going to all have to bear with me, because I do it the old-fashioned way and read my notes. Um, but I want to say a good morning to everybody. Uh, it's so glad to see so many people here for our eighth annual research symposium. And in 2006, along with our, my fellow board members, my wife, uh, Alan Crane, Peter Barrett, and Janet Atkins, we founded the Autism Consortium as an innovative collaboration among Boston's diverse community of clinicians and scientists. And it's really been an incredible path. Our mission was to foster connections among clinicians, researchers, and families to advance the understanding of autism, autism spectrum disorders, and improve the diagnostics and therapy that all the families were able to receive. With the help of now over 125 individual clinical and scientific members, 17 institutions, the consortium has been able to do, accomplish a lot of things, but just a few establish a more integrated framework for the work, set in motion mechanisms for collaboration among scientists, create a network of clinicians across institutions, and encourage, very importantly, many more families to participate in autism research. It is because of everybody in this audience that the Autism Consortium has been able to accomplish its mission. Together, we have achieved more than I think any of us could ever have imagined. I want to highlight a few achievements among many that have occurred. First, our major research institutions are increasingly integrated on their own campuses today. And even more importantly, scientists and clinicians are working together across institutions and disciplines. Clinical care has significantly improved and expanding. As major hospitals have created interdisciplinary centers, to deliver the highest level of integrated autism clinical care in the country. Families are experiencing better care in these settings as diagnosis and treatment of children is informed by a collaborative team of clinicians across a range of disciplines. The consortium study on clinical genetics testing help establish a new national diagnostic approach and standard of care. Families are better informed about ongoing research, and more importantly, they're, perform they're participating in increasing numbers. Scientific knowledge of autism has increased across the, the vast community through key demonstration projects in autism genetics, biomarker analysis, animal models, and multimodal imaging. Many more researchers have brought their experiences and their expertise to the disciplines and field of autism in basic science, translational medicine, and clinical research. When we began in 2006, there were, we could identify 160 local researchers that were involved in a little over 300 collaborations. As many of you who came last year saw in the study that we had done about the autism connectome, today there are over 270 scientists and clinicians involved in autism research in the greater Boston area, and over 1,500 collaborative efforts, a more than five-fold increase. Really amazing. These collaborations have brought funding in excess of $100 million to the greater Boston area from government, philanthropy, and industry into the community. And our work in Boston has helped inform the integrated autism community across the country and clinical care frameworks now underway in other areas of the country, notably in the southeast in the San Francisco Bay Area where we've tried to help and assist what they're doing. Based on this very successful and positive evolution, we clearly have a true autism community today in Greater Boston. And the future, as I think Matt and other people have pointed out, is truly exciting. After speaking to many of our partners and funders, the board of the consortium is now very confident that a discrete organization dedicated to fostering collaboration is no longer necessary in Greater Boston. Collaboration is now truly part of the institutional DNA throughout the area. The work 
the members of the Autism Consortium began increasingly is embedded and will continue to be led by our academic and clinical partners. We are confident that this incredible progress will continue and resources will be made accessible to local and national autism researchers and clinicians working on behalf of families everywhere. As part of our transition, there are a few new directions I wish to tell you about today. First, this Autism Consortium Research Symposium will be broadened next year. Uh, and will continue as the Neurodevelopmental Disorders Annual Research Symposium. Leaders from Boston Children's Hospital, Mass General Hospital, and MIT will share the leadership of the symposium and organize this annual event going forward. Our Families Foundation will provide funding for the symposium and for the support staff going forward. The Autism Consortium Research Database, with over 2,000 individual entries, is being integrated into the National Institutes of Mental Health National Database for Autism Research. This process is underway right now and will be completed by year end so that the, all of what we've done will be available to scientists across the country. Our members will, of course, continue to receive access to this valuable information. The 550 biological samples from various studies sponsored by the consortium have been stored locally at the Broad Institute with duplicative sets at the National Institutes of Mental Health. These samples will also remain accessible to researchers. The Autism Consortium has dedicated autism resource specialists who have served more than 10,000 families to date. Really one of the more amazing things we've seen come out of what we've done. Going forward, this team will be known as the Family Support Network with collaboration fostered by co-leaders from Boston Children's and the Laurie Center at Mass General. The Nancy Laurie Marks Family Foundation and our Family Foundation have agreed to provide partial funding for the team at all five sites through at a minimum of 2016, with the expectation that individual hospitals will raise additional funds for future support of this very important resource for clinics and families. The consortium's biomarker project currently taking place at five clinical sites across Massachusetts, is providing vital insights into best practices for engaging clinicians, <coughs> excuse me, apologize, for engaging clinicians in autism research and organizing a multi-site research in a defined geographical area. With ongoing leadership from Boston Children's Hospital, recruitment will continue in 2015. The Autism Consortium Board, Steering Committee, Executive Director and Staff will continue to facilitate these transitions to the resources, uh, uh, or basically to the resources of the Massachusetts autism community through 2015. We are extremely proud of everything that we've been able to collectively accomplish. We are grateful to our 125 individual members and the 17 institutional members who are making contributions every day to improving the lives of children with autism and related disorders and their families everywhere. We thank every one of you. We also wish to thank the many leaders who have stepped forward to embrace our vision. Early on, Dr. Susan Hockfield, past president of MIT, Dr. Eric Lander, founding director of the Broad Institute. Dr. Steve Hyman, who at the time of creation was then provost of Harvard University and is now director of the Stanley Center for Psychiatric Research at the Broad Institute at Harvard and MIT, which as many of you know was just funded with a $650 million gift and will be working in the area. The leaderships of Mass General Hospital, Boston Children's Hospital, Boston Medical Center, Tufts Medical Center, UMass Memorial Medical Center, Beth Israel Deaconess, and McLean Hospital have all been so helpful to us along the way. Tom Insel, director of the National Institutes of Mental Health, has participated at every step whenever we asked him to. Our scientific advisors, Dr. Jim Gazella of MGH, Dr. Maganka Sir of MIT, and Dr. Chris Walsh of Boston Children's Hospital have been so insightful. In addition, we wanna, we wanna basically also thank our steering committee that helped set priorities and vet projects. There was an institutional, uh, one person from every institution on that committee. 
A very special thanks to the philanthropic and thought leadership support we received from the Simons Foundation, Nancy Laurie Marks Foundation, the Klarman Family Foundation, the illustrious anonymous, uh, anonymous Boston-based foundation, along with many other individual donors. Our family foundation is proud to have shared this funding. And we simply could not have done this without the support and generosity of everybody. A heartfelt thanks to our board members, Alan Crane, Susan Whitehead, Peter Barrett, and Janet Atkins, whose wisdom and energy provided great guidance and direction for our efforts. I want to say a special thank you to my wife, Anne, who's the heart and soul of our effort to push forward to help families. Her many hours of work, brain power, and sheer determination are remarkable. Thank you, Anne. Last, but in no way least, I want to thank our executive director, Dee Dee Phillips. Her tireless efforts over many years have pushed this collaborative effort forward in a way no one else could have. Dee Dee, thank you for all that you've done. To each of you, again, our great thanks for believing in the mission, for believing in the power of collaboration here in Boston. We believe that power is alive and ever growing. Together, we have accomplished a tremendous amount. Our collective impact is felt across the field of neurodevelopmental disorders. Today, with a powerful array of involved scientists and clinicians, the advent of cutting edge tools and growing knowledge of the phenotype-genotype correlation of the disease. Powered by visionary funders, Boston is at the epicenter of change for understanding the brain. Spectacular efforts are underway across the city and across the country, and we look forward to their positive results for patients and families impacted by all brain-related issues. Boston has truly entered an exhilarating era of promise, progress, and speed. And together, we can and will unravel the mysteries of the human brain. Thank you all.